Bruce Muffson, LCSW, coming to you again from Sunridge of Nevada with another music video. Tonight, guys, you asked for it, you requested it, it's here. Capital C's. Uh, we got tons and tons of comments from our last song, You've All Love, to do another one of his. And we listened to you guys. And what came up over and over and over again? Black Petunia. I said, okay, no problem. And doing this song was a pleasure. Once again, at the top of his game, but there's a lot of collaboration here. I'm going to talk about that and how this song melded together. And I was just saying this to uh, my producer slash agent slash everything. It's a great song. But what makes it into a classic is the use of Jake the Rhymer, Jack the Rhymer at the end to give his piece of his perspective as well about not having a father. So without further ado, let's get into it right away. What I want to say is this, I'm always interested for me, and you guys know this now from all the videos that I've done, I, I like music. I mean, music is a very important thing for me, but I always like to know how is music being used to set up the lyrics and to get you into the mood. And once again, Capital Steve does an amazing job with this. He had knowledge create the dark hypnotic instrumental. The beats, the pressing feeling is appropriate for what, you know, Capital Steve and Jack the Rhymer Verses are about considering, they're about dealing with their sorrows, lack of fathers. The strings that are used in the piano play off against each other to draw and suck you in. That's really a talent in itself. At the listening to the song multiple times, which is what I always do, I saw it as a series of like dominoes, one after the other falling into each other. And, con you know, connecting verses like a series of dominoes that have been set up. Each section has its own specific purpose and are distinct from each other and are meant to stand alone. Here's how I saw it. Here's how I broke it down. How do I relate to the opposite sex and still be me and true to myself? That's the first piece. That's verse one. Okay. Then you go to the second part of verse one and it goes, who am I and what am I? I can't escape the passing of time. Am I moving forward? Who am I turning into as an adult? Am I losing my essence as well as my friends? Okay, fine. Number three, when it talks about going about the weed, pass the joint, pass it, pass, puff, puff, pass, puff, puff, pass, I need the weed to cover for me so that they can't see the real me. Keep on passing it around. God forbid you might see me vulnerable and I can't afford that. Then you have number four, which is a very short piece. That's the bridge. I'm in it, and this song is all that I can give you. Okay, I have to move forward. I can't stand still, and this song is all that I have. All right, then you have Jack the Rhymer, for me, who did five and six, which was his piece, verse two, and I broke it in half. I need no reminiscence of history, and then it goes, and, I, and then I'm in front of you, bang, that's five. And five to me is this, talking about his relationship with his mother and all the struggles they have been through and why he has to keep writing. And finally, number six, yo, I wrap circles around the globe like the sun and moon. It all comes down to missing his father and the massive hole that is left in him as he needs and misses him. It's the pain of not having a dad around. And all five pff, crash into six. It's amazing how it all flows as it comes to an end. This is how it is without a father. What's interesting to me, and I had to do some digging, and I had to ask a lot of questions. I had to ask my producer, again, things about this. He met him, Jack the Rhymer, in the fourth grade when they were going to the same elementary school in Brooklyn. And what's incredible to me is, to Steve's credit, he picked him, this guy Jack the Rhymer, to write verse 2, to sing verse 2, 5 and 6 for me, because they both had the same essence. They both lost their dads. And each one kind of bookended their feelings, their sorrows, their frustrations, their loneliness into making this an amazing song. So here we go. Black Petunia by Capital C's. I only had, and again, I didn't cover every line. I only want to cover, as always, I only want to cover the lines that I find clinically significant for me. I only had two problems with females. Coming off too strong and waiting too long to move on. 
To me, what he's saying is I'm still trying to figure out me and how to find out what am I looking for in a true romantic partner. Okay. Then it goes like this. And if she do me wrong, I keep moving on my quest to find love, still burning till my doobie's gone. Okay. That's what everyone is looking for. The internal quest and goal. I My quest to find love. Trust me. I went through it. Everyone in the world goes through it. Who am I going to find my soulmate to find real love? Perfect. Then it goes like this. I'm lost in trying to find my route. My, I'm sorry, my roots. And my conscience won't allow me to shoot. So I only value time in the booth if that's fine by you, true. I'm lost in trying to find my route. But my thoughts only inspire me to find my roots. Route, then roots. It's a great example of wordplay. My route, okay, and my roots. I'm sorry, my root, I'm sorry, my root, my routes. You only know who you are so you know where you come from. So it's a great way of looking at it. I got to know who I am first. If I don't know who I am, my, what is my essence? What's my background? What's my history? How do I know what's the effective route to find that? So, you know, who are you? That's a famous song by The Who, band from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Everyone tries to figure that out because I know I did. Who am I? Who is Bruce when I was a kid trying to find my own identity? Until I knew my past, I really couldn't know my future and what route to take to be successful. Everyone goes through this, guys. Trust me. But Steve's here did a great job explaining it. Now, here we go. I'm trapped in my reality. There's a bastard staring back at me. The last chance of happiness for my family. Because mom is getting older and it's bringing out the man in me. I wish it happened sooner because every afternoon, I realize another day is passing, that I lack improvement. I think I'm losing it. Homie's asking what happened to you. You know, this to me was such a great... You know, I think I'm losing it. What a great seven-line burst. What is my reality? I'm trapped in my reality. What is my reality? Question we all ask ourselves. What is real? What's fake? Again, like I always say, you can't break every mirror in the house that you see. Because in the end, the only person you're fooling is yourself. This is real. This is real. There's no dad. You got to step up. Guess what? You are the man of the house. There's no getting around it. You, you, you're the number four hitter. You're the go-to scorer. There's no man around. You grow up really, really quickly. You realize clock is ticking and it's not going backward but forward. I use this line in therapy every single time, whoever I discuss or talk to. What do you do with your day? Is it productive? We're not productive. It gets cold like that, but it's truth. What do you do with your day? You're manning up, then a man up, got a man up. You can't be wasting time with, with silly stuff. There's a story I want to share. This guy was in, he was a teenager in the 30s, and it was the thing called the Great Depression. He grew up in Montana. He was the oldest of eight kids. His parents were preachers in Montana, of all places. No money. He was the oldest kid. I think he was 16. And they said to him, his parents said, Art, we, we can't afford to keep you here. We can't feed you. You got to go. He left. He left the family house in Montana, probably rural Montana. And what he did, it sounds crazy now, but back then it was fairly normal. He, what they call, hopped the rails. He rode trains for two years till he got his way to San Diego, which at that time was a sleepy port city. After World War II, it began to boom. Sleepy Navy City. And he landed up in um, San Diego, realized it's warm. That's not Montana where it's freezing cold. Stayed there, got his GED, I believe, and then he got drafted into World War II. And after World War II, he went to college on the GI Bill and got into radio, got into TV, wrote a lot of books. Kids say the darndest things, blah, blah, blah. He wrote several autobiographies, but he never blamed his parents for making him leave because he said, I was the oldest. What were they going to do? They couldn't feed me. I had to leave. And thank God nothing insane happened to him on the railroad going back and forth. 
that's it. He he grew up in a sense overnight. I love you, mom. I love you, dad. And but I'm gone. And you know, I'm gonna flip it. So let's say this was 1938. Let's say 1940. 40. Let's say 60. Yeah, 60, 75 years later. I've been in hundreds of homes where I'm talking to kids who are 10. They're the parents. They are the man or the or the mom of the house. I've I've walked into homes where I'm talking. I'm like, hey, knock knock, let me in. A ten year old girl, can I speak to your mom? Mom, get out, get out of here, mom. Ooh, ooh. From four thirty in the afternoon. What are you doing all day? And the girl's like, he needs to talk to you. This man has to talk to you. Remember, mom? Remember I told you four thirty today? And the girl wants to go to a room, and I'm like, no, honey, come here, come here. I need you. You're the smartest one in the house. And she'll get her brother. She'll get the mom's boyfriend who's also passed out at 5.15 in the afternoon. And, like, she's in charge. I've had guys handle stuff. I've had so many kids have to step up. And it's not a good thing. It's not something that's positive. But the parents are dysfunctional. And I'm talking to a 12, 13, 14-year-old, young as 9, 10. And they got more in the ball than these parents do. You grow up really, really quickly. So I get what he's trying to say here, Capital. Makes a lot of sense to me what Steve's is trying to say. Then it goes like this. Um, the concrete rose turned into a black petunia. Well, that's from, you know, Tupac, the idea of a rose coming out of concrete, you know, something growing positively. But he didn't just say black petunia for no reason. There's a reason behind it. Curious. Well, well, well. All about the petunia flower, because I talked this over with my, you know, producer. Here's what he said. The meaning of a petunia is not quite as flattering as the flower's beauty. It has a meaning behind it. Resentment is one meaning along with anger. If you place any importance on the flower's meaning, the alternative meaning is wanting the comfort of another person. Gee. Does that sound like they'd want the comfort of a father? Something there. Anger. Resentment and anger. And by the way, how do you grow petunias? It's a relatively tough plant. Take a lot of punishment. The petunia can tolerate steep climate fluctuations. It's hardy. It's a survivor. So... The concrete, this concrete rose turned into a black petunia. Yeah, it wasn't just done randomly why he picked that. Then it goes, I guess that's how it's supposed to go. Blank being emotional, I'd rather, I'd rather braggadocio. I love that line. I love that word. Uh, drown, and I'll talk about it a little bit later. Drown in my emotion till I overflow with doper quotes. So take a hit of this and pass it off to so-and-so. Why deal with reality? Get high. You don't have to deal with it. The truth, you know, THC plus meth over and over and over again. I look at people's charts. THC and meth, THC and meth, THC and meth. It's almost like I could, I could have it on a yarmulke. THC plus meth is what I'm going to see all day long. THC and meth. See the real me. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Tired of being self-destructive? course you don't do it alone you gotta have a group of people that's why he says take a hit of this and pass it off to so and so drug and alcohol addiction is bad enough but it's worse when you do it in it by yourself that's super depressing why do you think addicts always want to share misery loves company you don't want to do it by yourself just getting high all the time you want to have friends festive enjoyable pass it pass it around don't talk about feelings or something. God forbid something important. You might grow from this. Pass it. Pass it. What's not in your hand? You don't have a joint in your hand? Pass it around to Bruce. Give it to him. It's common sense. Misery, unhappiness, loves company. You got the hook. Puff, puff, pass. Puff, puff, pass. Puff, puff, pass. Are you high enough? Just getting fired up. Puff, puff, pass, puff, puff, pass, puff, puff, pass. Are you high enough? Are you high enough? 
I'm just getting fired up. This sequence perfectly describes the addict's life, where the drugs or the alcohol and, you know, is in charge. If you're not high, you better get high. We don't want to make the mistake about talking about our feelings and emotions and problems. What's the point of getting together then? We'd have to go home and really deal with it, deal with reality. Well, if we can all go to somebody's house and get high, even better. Remember, we're too tough for that. We're braggadocio. I love that word, braggadocio. Yeah, we're braggarts. We don't deal with our problems. We just pretend we don't have any. Great word to tie it in all together perfectly. Everyone has to get fired up so we can all jump off the cliff together. All I can give you, and this song is all I, all I can give you, nothing else to offer. It's like, you know, there used to be an expression about lemmings, you know, they'd all jump off a cliff. And that's how I used to be. Everyone's doing it. I got to do it. No, I'm looking at common sense. No brains in my head. Let me follow everybody. Are you high enough? Are you high enough? And on the bridge, I'm in it for the wind because these L's ain't doing blank. I guess I've grown used to it. And the song is all I can give you. I guess I've grown used to it. Your tolerance grows higher and higher till you overdose or you get that drug-induced psychosis. Mimic schizophrenia, not pretty to look at. You start talking to yourself. You start, your brain is not functioning. You know, you need more and more of the drug to get the same high. That's how people will say, what, what's the overdose? For? Over, overdose. Because when you initially start taking, your brain gets so saturated with that stuff, whatever you're taking, it needs more and more to get the same high. That's a, that's a common mistake that people don't really understand about drug usage, even alcohol usage. You know, two beers gave me a buzz. And 15, 20 years later, I need a case of beer to give me the same buzz. You get what's they call wet brain. Your brain has developed such a tolerance for the alcohol or the drugs, it needs more and more and more to give you the same high. That's what they say, chasing the high. It's where that comes from. I chase the high to get, so to get high, I got to chase it with more and more to get, to get the same what I got, you know, 10 years ago. Then you got Jack the Rhymer coming. I need no reminiscence of history or reminiscence of history. This the requirement for them hard times. We crush up mad trees and this memory trips down. Memory lane keeps me steps ahead of them. Yeah, I don't want to remember. I don't want to remember because all the memories are bad ones. I push myself because I don't want to go back there. It's too depressing. It's too real. It's too raw. Oh, I can relate to that. A lot of my memories of childhood are bad. I don't want to live like I lived as a child. It's scary as, as heck to me. That's why I push myself with all that I do. I never want to go back to those memories because those memories, quite frankly, living at home were depressing. I want to rewrite my, 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 my final last couple of chapters of my own life. I'm headed in the direction of anything that's elevating there. That's why I'm running through the night. And mama, when your sun shine, they ain't going to ever take our light again. Overpriced taste, we've been hungry, we're over, we overdo. Yeah, I have to go nonstop. I can't stop. Don't want to go back to the past. We're overdue for our piece of the American pie, our American dream, our happiness. Oh, I know that feeling. Watching gangsters in the tube living like they showed me to. New Jack City, so the whole clip paid in full. No cinema, but it's coming soon. I go, I, sl I slow, never, and it's no wonder I'm in front of you. Yeah, I know it's not real. We get it. But TV, the media, it seduces us. What you see, I mean, you just want to reach out and touch it. Look how they live, Mama. Look, how, We're going to live like that one day. How many times have I had people say to me, I was watching on TV. I saw this on TV. I saw this on the Internet. Got to have it. Got to have it. Of course. It's addicting. Then I want to end up with this. Yo, I wrap circles around the globe like the sun and moon. This is six to me. Blessed I was, a son of a Jew, and the world knew. He only kept the gold round, wrapped round his tooth. Proof, damn, why did the good die? Damn, Pop, why did you leave at 49? Why you leave at 49? We're actually at 43. You should have held up. Still thinking about what my seed was going to call you. 
granddad, grandfather, papa. Reminiscing writing shock and listening to Big Papa. Because see, Daddy was a street scholar. I guess the knife wounds were mnemonic. My mama looking at me like the new Mala. I'm hearing her that Black King made Brooklyn look like Nigeria. I want to read the whole thing to say this. Each line is, is brilliant. It's so true and honest because every kid did not have a dad told me lines similar to this. And I've had hundreds of thousands of kids tell me exactly this. I miss my father. I miss not knowing my father. There's part of me that's empty, full of anguish, bitterness, depression, despair, anger, and frustration, longing. I've told this story a million times. I've told this to people in their 40s when I'm doing assessments, we're talking to them, and they describe their dysfunctional life. And I always go like this. If I was your father, I'd be so proud of you. I'd give you hugs and kisses every day and tell you how proud I was. I've had dozens of people burst into tears. White, black, brown, yellow, even the aliens from Area 51. They started bursting into tears. Sobbing, how to get tissues. Someone across the table is saying to them, you're important, you're special, you're meaningful, you have value. Sobbing. Realize the longing. So even if you are a father, please be a better father. It rips them out. I miss or missed my father. Yeah. Yeah. It's an amazing song, but what did it for me is the second part, verse two, Jack the Rhymer. Steve was brilliant. I mean, he got up the right person to finish the song. He opened it. This guy was like the closer in baseball. Comes in like eighth inning, you know, throws strikes, just throws heat. Strikes out five out of six guys. Six guy hits a weak round ball to second. Game over. It was brilliant. He picked the right guy with the right understanding who also had a loss of his own. And they made it work together beautifully. I want to say out there again, thanks to all of you that are out there for this suggestion for this song. I now have such a much better understanding of who Capital Steez is and what he's trying to say. It's cold, and that's what makes it raw and real. It hit home for me as it was open and autobiographical, bi bi biographical, I guess, from two guys who shared their experiences. It's brilliant. You know, Steez has become one of my favorite artists. And you're saying to, of course, the name in the past tense because he's no longer here with us. But I understand now with each song and listening to him and hearing him talk, what he's trying to say about his own feelings, his own feelings about his own father. For those of you that are watching tonight, okay, if you're a father, be a better father. Tonight, give your kid, one of you, when you watch this, whatever kid you have, even if it's your stepkid, Give your kid a hug and a kiss and say how much you love them, how much you appreciate them, and then just take a walk with them. Just share your thoughts with them. If you're not a father to be and you come from a dysfunctional home, you come, if you have a great father and you've been, you're very, very lucky, go thank your father. And if you don't have a father where you have a dysfunctional father or a father that's an idiot, decide what kind of father you want to be because that's going to really determine what kind of marriage you're going to have or relationship. I can tell you some experience being married as long as I have. What kind of father are you going to turn out to be? And I want everyone watching this video to please share that with me. What I just said the last two minutes. If you're a father, are you going to are you going to become a better father? Do you hug your kid? Do you give your kids hug and kisses and give them confidence and self esteem? If you don't have a father, what kind of father are you going to be? And how can you take away from this? What is it you want to learn how to do when you have children of your own? So let us know. I'm kind of curious. It's a great song, but it is a message here. And the message is if you're a father, take your role seriously. Give it back to your kids. And it will make your marriage or relationship go that much higher, that much further, and make your other significantly more happy. Thanks again, guys, for watching. Bruce Moffson, LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada.